So I have two of these. Yep, I spent over $800 on 14 year old cameras for this video. This was originally supposed to be my first ever camera review where I filmed the entire video on the camera I was reviewing just so there's no confusion on the shots. So let's just set the scene, all right? It's 2008, YouTube was not very good. It didn't even support HD or 16 by nine video. Linus Tech Tips started his channel and the film Bolt got released. So a bit of a wash overall. Oh, and the whole Great Recession thing. But there was a light in the darkness. This is the Canon 5D Mark II, truly a game changer. The reason why this camera was such a game changer is that it was a 21 megapixel full frame sensor capable of full HD video recording at full frame. In a world where 480p was pretty much still the standard and phone cameras were basically just Game Boy cameras, Canon dropped this absolute bomb on the market for just $2,700. That's like if Canon released a 5D Mark V that recorded 8K full frame video for like three or $4,000. And funnily enough, this was also the last time Canon innovated on anything other than color science. Also, if anyone's interested in the Sony full frame competitor back from 2008, let me know. I might revisit that. It's a pretty interesting little camera. Let's just jump into this. I mostly already went over the specs, but we've got a 21 megapixel sensor, 1080p, 24 FPS video with a bit rate of 38 megabits per second one CF slot, some ports, and a 920K dot display, and a crazy nine autofocus points. That is next level. And this is a professional Canon camera, which means there's a few things you're gonna come to expect. Build quality is beyond exceptional. The entire camera, even after 14 years, operates flawlessly. Well, one of them. This one actually was working properly until I went to take it out to actually use it. And while I can't get it on video because it only does it sometimes, the secondary mirror inside the camera gets consistently stuck and leaves half of the entire camera frame just completely black. If I wanted to get this repaired, I got an estimate from someplace and they said it'd be about $150 to repair it. And frankly, for a, this one was actually $300 camera, I'm not sure I'm comfortable repairing a camera that old without a full service, and a full service would most likely cost even more. Other than that issue though, I can say my other 5D Mark II has been flawless. It has the classic Canon grip, which I personally love unlike any other, and it's just extremely well built and sturdy camera. I mean, all the dials on mine are still in good condition. They're still very clicky. The paint is even in good shape, along with all the rubber grips on the camera. The screen is even in decent shape. I mean, the front glass could have easily just been replaced if it wasn't but whatever, I mean, plus honestly, for a camera from 2008, menus are pretty decent and the screen is pretty responsive. I haven't had any issues with this once I learned how to use the weird nipple control thing. It's not as good as a touchscreen or modern Canon menus, but it's all right, especially because the menus are actually a little bit more simple because there was less features. So, hey, that works itself out. Something a little less all right is trying to adjust settings on the screen. It's not bad, really. I think I'm just spoiled with my ADD and the touch screen where it's insanely easy to change any settings, both for photo mode, video mode, and photo live view. I mean, it's not bad, really. Overall, for usability, this camera is not being held back by outdated tech, which is really nice. So let's talk photos. Honestly, I've said it once, I'm gonna say it a million times. If you buy a DSLR made in the past 15 years, chances are taking photos on them is gonna be really similar. This has nine focus points and just, I mean, it's fantastic autofocus. It's a DSLR. I really couldn't even notice much of a difference between it and my ADD in terms of photo autofocus. Photo quality is also great. I don't mean, oh, it's great for the time and MySpace compresses the photos anyways. Was MySpace still relevant in 2008? Whatever, Facebook, Yahoo, something that does photos. Either way, the photos on this look fantastic. They're sharp, you get the full frame look, and even for low light, I would honestly be comfortable shooting up the ISO 1600, 3200, maybe 64 in a pinch, which frankly isn't too bad. Yeah, it's not A7S levels, but I mean, this thing was made in 2008. If you're looking for a basic full frame, no frills photo camera that you could most likely keep forever and buy cheap lenses for, this is it, frankly. I mean, it's actually an entire internal debate for me right now if I wanna sell this or not, and I'm leaning towards keeping it. But it really is the perfect camera to just have takes regular Canon LPE6 batteries and they last a really long time in photo mode. Plus, if it's serviced at least, these things are known to last forever. I mean, these are 14 years old and they're in insanely good shape. The extra one even fixed itself before I shipped it off. Kind of. If I had the money, honestly, I would throw this thing off a cliff or, well, 
but if you're looking for a budget video camera or something a little lighter and easier to carry around, that is where this does start to fall apart. Now I know back in 2008, this camera was renowned for its quality. It was even used to shoot part of the Avengers, if I remember correctly. The good one, from 2012. Was that controversial? Whatever. But nowadays, where 4K is becoming the standard and HDR is starting to peek its ugly money pit into my living room and bank account, this camera, frankly, just, it doesn't stand up. The video is soft really soft. It has this early 2000s digital camera look that I'm personally not particularly fond of. I really like how film looks and I really like how modern cameras look, but I'm just not really sure what this is. Probably the low dynamic range mixed with the lack of sharpness just reminds me of the Star Wars prequels. I just hate soft pixels. They get everywhere. But in all seriousness, the video just, it doesn't hold up today for me. So a quick little addition here. When I was testing the camera, I hadn't taken very many video clips when I wrote the script. After using it more for video, it actually isn't as soft as I initially thought. I mostly looked at this camera from a photo perspective and the video kind of took a sidebar. So anyways, yeah, not as bad as I thought, but it doesn't take away from the overall point of the video. That's it. And actually using the camera while in video mode isn't particularly easy either. It's better than I expected, but it can still be hard to really get a grasp of how to properly adjust all of the settings. Plus, if you're not rigging it up, the screen is really just low res, it's not adjustable, and that just doesn't help with shooting. And while battery life for photos is great, video, not as amazing. And this camera only records to see fast cards, which would be okay, it just doesn't support clean HDMI out without some magic lantern trickery. So on a stock 5D2, you can't record externally. So if you're shooting a lot of video, prepare to load up on CF cards that are most likely going to end up costing more than the camera itself, defeating the purpose of getting a cheap older camera. You can, to save money, get some vintage lenses and with Magic Lantern have some better video features like focus peaking, but it's a DSLR. So a lot of lenses like Minolta and Canon FD lenses won't be compatible just due to how flange distances work. And due to the giant full frame mirror, some lenses can actually extend backwards and come in contact with the mirror. I haven't tested this for obvious reasons and I don't plan on it, but that's always something to consider. Which, speaking of Magic Lantern, I tested it out. It's still fun to mess with, but very buggy still, and frankly, didn't increase the quality of the footage actually coming out of the camera very much. Your results may vary, but I'm still unimpressed with the major features of it. Smaller stuff like focus peaking and zebras are insanely helpful though and actually worth considering using Magic Lantern for, but that doesn't actually make the footage look any better. Now I know it sounds like I'm just hating on this camera now and I don't want it to sound like that because frankly if I wasn't constrained with money and the whole YouTubing thing, I would probably own a 5D as my main camera for shooting just because I love Canon cameras and lenses so much. Just the general Canon look and variety of lenses, and the photos are going to look good as long as you have a relatively new camera. And the usability on this thing is great. I mean, it's a DSLR, so it's basic, it's simple, and it uses hardly any batteries, which is nice. This is a serious camera, and it takes full-frame lenses. And if you're investing into full-frame glass, it might just be best to bite the bullet and consider getting an EOS RP instead of this. If you're not worried about the future, though, and you want a good camera now that still has a few years of life in it, I will try and spring for the 5D3. <laughs> but if that's out of your budget and you want full frame, this is it. And honestly, I've decided I'm keeping mine for the foreseeable future. So I have a full frame camera that I can take around and not worry about, you know, risking three grand just to take photos of my dog.